Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we encourage you and equip you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I am excited to bring back a guest that I had on recently. His name is Darren Tannis, and I want to tell you a little bit about him in case you missed that episode before. But get ready to buckle your seatbelt because we have a great podcast episode in store for you. But Darren Tannis started preaching and evangelizing on the streets of South Africa at the age of 15. His mentor, Kobus Van Rensburg, um, at the time was a strong prophetic voice and evangelist. He gave him a 150 seat tent and sent him out to preach the good news, heal the sick, and bring king the, people into the kingdom. The ministry continued to grow and a 7,000 seat building was built and is still going strong today. Darren's travel ministry continued until he came to America in 2013. Upon arriving in America, he settled in the small town of Macon, Georgia. That same year, John Paul Jackson, Paul Kane, and another individual were praying, and God told John Paul to contact Darren and tell him that he would be the man to take his ministry of dreams and visions to the next level and generation. Darren and his wife um, started a ministry which they call Words of Life Ministry, inspired by John Paul Jackson's prophetic word, which Cohen coincidentally was registered. The nonprofit was approved by the state on the anniversary of John Paul's death. Darren is a Hebrew scholar, the Dean of New Life School of Ministry, and he also serves on staff at New Life Church as our IT guy, where he basically fixes everything with a button. However, I think there's been some changes since we talked last time, because now you're starting a church, which we'll talk about that. Darren and his wife, Donisha, their daughter, and a little one on the way live in a Augusta, Georgia. So Darren, welcome back to Dare to Hear the Podcast. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> it's so we, exciting. I enjoy our chats. I do. I really enjoy our chats. And um, so much so that I forget what time it is. And then we just go and <laughs> but everybody loved it. They're like, no, Debbie, we're so glad that you didn't break it into two episodes that you just let it go because they got so much. In fact, they said, Darren, that it was one of those episodes that they're going to continue to go back and re-listen to because there were so many things we talked about. Oh, in that well, episode. Listen. So thank you again for coming on and just the honor of your time and really sharing the things that uh, God has placed on your heart with my audience on Dare to Hear. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you for the privilege. Uh, you know, I, I hold you guys, you and your husband in high regard. I haven't met him yet, but you know, you can, you can always see the people's fruit and it's, it's great to walk this with you guys. I, I, like I told you, I, I feel like God said we're going to walk a road together as friends and yeah. uh, co-laborers in the gospel. Yeah. And I just love how, I mean, who knew? I mean, I don't think you did. I don't think I did when we met at that TV station in North Augusta back in March that God was doing yeah. something bigger than both of us. We were just like coming to be guests on the show. You're a regular on that show, but I I'm am, not because yeah. I don't live in the area, <laughs> but God made it so that we got to connect and to meet and really talk. And I just had so much fun getting to know you and uh, picking your brain about um, Hebrew scholarly <laughs> things. So well, I'm glad I can help, you know? Yeah. Well, I had, a, <laughs> I had a couple of questions for you just because from yeah. one of our conversations, I um, was saying to you, I was like, this is so good. I need to bring you back on the podcast. And you're like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. So there's a couple things I want to talk about today. I want to yeah. talk about discerning the times, which is the sons of Issachar, because I yeah. think people hear that, but they don't really understand it. But the other thing in our conversation, our phone conversation the other day, was you were really talking about what God's having you meditate on right now, which is Joshua 1.8, which is yeah. about the meditation, not to let these words depart your mouth, but to meditate on them and what that really means. So between those two, where do you want to start? Sons of Issachar or meditating? Well, I think we should start with the times and that will lead okay. us into, you, you know, when you know the times, you know what to meditate. So you know Good what point. to release. Great point. So, you know, everyone knows that scripture about the, the children of Issachar, that they, they knew the times and that's why they led Israel. But, you know, so few people, when they touch on knowing the times, that they, they forget about Matthew 16, mm. you know. And uh, I've got it pulled up here because when you said times, I said, okay. I know where, where to go. So Matthew 16, I'll read it real quick. It says, The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempted, tempting him, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. 
mm-hmm. you know hi uh charismatic pentecostals 101 <laughs> that's right you know and and he answered them and he said unto them when it is evening you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red you know and in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red again and lowering oh you hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky but you cannot discern the signs of the times before we understand what the times are we need to see what signs are being shown mm. so go, keeping that in mind go to acts 2 right yep. in the last days i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams your sons and daughters will prophesy i will show what signs in the heaven and wonders on the earth below blood fire pillars of smoke everyone knows it right yep. so what was the first sign the Holy Spirit, then he'll show signs. So I think to know where we're going really with the times is we have to look at the signs mm. and that rhymed. That did. That was so good. <laughs> you know, so I, I normally ask the Lord before I, I discern the times, I say, okay, what are the signs? What are the indicators? Because God said before he does anything on the earth, he'll reveal it to the prophets. That's right. So prophetically, what are the signs that I see? Mm. Ah. And, and, and so I, I look and I say, God, show me, show me. And signs, the, another word for signs are symbols. Okay. You know, types, shadows, foreshadowing. It's terms that you don't hear much, but you'll hear it in the mystics. Mm-hmm. You know, and then mystics became a bad word because they, they're funky, they're not based in every you know every good baptist will say oh there's no there's no foundational doctrine there and, but honestly they're just people that pay more attention to the spirit than to the natural and if you look at jesus what he compared he said you can look at natural things and determine what it will be like but you can't do that with spiritual things and when we try and take spiritual things and put them in the natural we can't discern them for it says the spirit discerneth the spirit and you cannot comprehend these things with a carnal mind so you have to have a renewed mind to discern these things you can't look at it through your theology through your doctrine now yes there are such things as um, solid good truth and doctrine you don't want to get caught off in flaky weird doctrines but you also don't want to limit god to your little box of doctrines Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. having a balanced solid foundation uh, foundational knowledge of the word will and then having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit to make the word come alive, you know, practicing that presence eventually opens us to a place where we can start seeing, oh, that looks like that. What does it look like in the spirit? And then reversing the order, you know, mm-hmm. and then you, you start determining what God's doing in the season by the signs that you see. Okay, that's really good. And I like what you said too, that that sometimes we like to put God in our size box and we like yeah. things by that. And I think because it makes us feel in control, so it makes us feel safe, but God doesn't want to be in a box. He wants to be outside right. of that. He is bigger than that. And so that's a challenge to all of us that, you know, when things happen and there are signs that happen and we become uncomfortable with them, it's really discerning, is this God, is this not God? And am I trying yeah. to hinder a move of God? test every spirit yeah it didn't say test every natural thing he said test the spirit yeah so where does it happen in spirit Mm -hmm. where do you worship in spirit and in truth you know we've got to take this into the place where it belongs Mm -hmm. now i think uh, uh, you know just having a a doctorate in theology and all that I, i think i understand the natural aspect very well but you know i can't take that knowledge and take it into the spirit realm now yeah of course it causes it creates a good foundation Mm -hmm. you know but we go from glory to glory faith to faith you can't stay stagnant you have to have truth as your rear guard as the word would say the king james you know that's really good yeah um so i have a question for you when you said that we have to um that we have to uh discern the times and the signs right yeah So if we're talking about today, if we're talking about what's going on, um, 
at the time that this will air, it'll probably be right in in September sometime, right? So it's still before right. the election. COVID is still happening. Um, we have uh, the Hebrew New Year is coming, which is a little Rosh bit Hashanah. different. Yeah, Rosh Hashanah is coming. September 18th, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. I, I'm learning from you. So tough. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So let's talk about like what are some of the signs that we should be looking in the natural to discern the times of what God is doing in the spiritual? What would that well, look so, like? So right now, what's happening is we're surrounded with such great fear. Mm-hmm. So the Bible says, you know, in the last days, men's heart will fade them, fail them because of fear. Mm. So we see that there's a failure in heart. So we know we're approaching an end of a season, an end of a, a time. So we're transitioning from one place to another because the word will keep repeating itself until the Lord comes back. Yeah. You know, the word never, it always goes forth and does everything it's caused to accomplish. Now, what the cross done, because people will say, yeah, but we're in the second dispensation. That's very true, but the word still works because the word is living so what a lot of things will happen is when they go through the cross they become transformed so we look for the transformed sign through grace through Mm. the lens of grace and faith and love so of course circumcision before the cross was in the flesh now circumcision is in the heart Mm -hmm. worship was done in the effort of man now it's done in the presence and the spirit of god so you know sacrifices you know, we're done with animals. Now it's done with the position of our heart. Mm. So the cross transformed a whole lot of things, but the word still repeats and keeps going around. And you'll see it. You'll see the type and shadow and the foreshadowing. Or if, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time, harvest time, you know. So we, we know the principles will keep on working and working, but we look for the transformative sign and we look for the redemption in everything. Mm. So men's heart are failing them, but what can we do? We can apply the ministry of Christ and bind up the brokenhearted. We can sit, we can cast out fear with what? Perfect love. So the, the, the response of the church, if we want to understand what's happening in the, in the times, it's so that we can plan our attack or our strategy. Mm-hmm. So fear has gripped the hearts of people. Fear of what's going to happen in the elections. Fear of what's going to happen with the um, uh, COVID and, uh, you know, all this with our... our um, African American brothers and sisters, all this stuff. So we have got all these things happening amongst us, and we can discern that the times are troubled, and we see the signs. There's brother against brother. Mm-hmm. We can put them all in the word, but the response is determined through the signs. Mm. So we cast out fear with what perfect love. So the 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 word of love has to be preached. The ministry of reconciliation has to become our forefront Mm -hmm. again. And we have to go back to the basic signs of the believer. These signs shall follow them that believe. They will heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. The reason we're afraid is because no one wants to go and get in proximity with someone to lay hands and get them healed because they're scared they're going to get it. But, you know, I look at the time of John G. Lake with the bubonic plague. He said, just put it on my hand, watch it die. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so something is missing. Yeah. Faith. That, that fear, that fear piece is coming. And you were telling me a, a testimony. Is it all right for you to share this yeah. about the person over the phone that you were praying for? Um, yeah. Can you share that testimony? Because I think people sure. need to hear that, that even if we can't get in proximity, like we shouldn't be fearful of laying hands on somebody um, even yeah. this season, but you over the phone prayed for yeah. someone. You should that. I had a friend that was in hospital and his wife called and she's like, um, it's bad. He's got an underlying illness. Uh, can you please pray? I said, okay, do me one thing. So I, I, I like to act out prophecy. Yeah. You know? And so I said, put me on speakerphone. And then of course you have to fight with the nurses and get in and disinfect and you can hear it all on this phone. It's like, wow, how long is this going to take? Right. And then they <laughs> don't even tell me the, the phone is on his chest, but I said, you put me on speakerphone, put me on his chest and, point the speaker of the phone towards his ears. Mm. And so they did it. And I don't know, I was in his chest. I'm waiting, waiting. And the, the next minute I'm like, are you done, sir? I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Okay, give me, give me, give me two minutes. And all I said is, my brother, you will live and not die 
and declare the good works of God. The stripes of Jesus have made you whole. In Jesus' name, get up, wake up. Because, of course, we, you know, when they intubate someone, they have to put them in a coma. Yeah. I said, wake up in the name of Jesus and live and not die and declare his good works because you're a worship leader and you need to worship in spirit and truth. And, you know, and then I just put down my phone. I'm like, well, she'll see the calls. Done. Yeah. I get a call back a few minutes later from his wife. She's like, um, his eyes just opened. I'm like, <laughs> yes. Huh? She's like, yeah, Darren, you don't get this. He's in an induced coma, he's, but his eyes just open. And they, uh, his O2 stats are, you know, his oxygen levels are, are just climbing, climbing, climbing. Um, this is a miracle. You know? <laughs> so there's, there's no, and I, you know, it's easy for me just because of this one reason. It's not because of great faith or fasting or praying. I grew up in a healing revival. I mm -hmm. saw it in Africa. We saw HIV AIDS. We saw tumors disappear in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything, it's, it's just the position where God put me in. And I'm so thankful. No one can take that away from me. Yeah. You know, I saw God move. And I saw as many people as I saw got healed. I also saw many people that didn't get healed and I don't have all the answers. So don't ask me why it doesn't it works for some and it doesn't, I don't know, but I know that it did. It does work. Yeah. But I know the church is growing and I just believe if everyone started doing it, if every believer started praying for the sick, we'll have none. You know, if you look at the, the there was even in the Exodus, the people of God says there was no, none feeble mm -hmm. or sick amongst them. Yeah. When the presence is with you, how can we fear sickness? There is none feeble. Their shoes didn't wear down. Their clothes didn't wear down. Come on. I mean. It's so good. I, I, I just, I, I, I need, as a prophet, uh, as prophets, I think we should really f yeah. say to the church, wake up. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's a really great word right there. Like, because I think that's true. That is the message really to the church is wake up, discern the times that you're in. Don't yeah. let fear rob you from really stepping in. Um, I know when we, we recorded a podcast episode for your podcast and yeah. you would ask me what the Lord was saying to me in this whole season. And this is another thing that he said, and I didn't say this on that, was that this is the church's finest hour. This is, yeah. this is time for the church to really show the power and the redempting, saving grace of who God is and what Jesus did on the cross. And in order for the church to have the, its finest hour, she has yeah, to prophecy. rise up. She has to wake up. The church mm. in America has been asleep for a long time because we haven't been yeah. persecuted. We haven't had some of the issues that um, other countries have had. I don't know what it's like when you were ministering in South Africa, but you know, you started with a tent. And I think what yeah. grew it to that 7,000 seat auditorium was because you were moving in miracle signs and wonders because those things will follow those who believe. And people, yeah. when they have this experiential knowledge of who God is, they can't deny that. So true. And you know, anybody who's ever ministered in a third world country can attest to this. It's easier to work in the supernatural mm -hmm. in a third world country because they don't have options. Yeah. When you take away options, and that's one thing, I'm, uh, you know, people are trying to pray away COVID. I think God's making it stay because he's going to use this for his glory. You know, because we don't have a vaccine. We don't have a cure. And if you immune compromise, you know, uh, what can you do but trust God to save you? And we got to get back to in him, I live, move and have my being. Yeah. You are complete in him, Colossians 2. So we have to come back to that total dependency of who he is. You know, we were born again. We were birthed out of the spirit. The very thing that gave us life in the beginning, the umbilical cord of God which is the grace of Jesus Christ and the blood, you know, it sustained us. Now that we're uh, slightly mature, now we think we can do it in works. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, oh, foolish senseless and unreflecting Galatians, who has bewitched you? You started off. Yeah. I love the Amplified. You need to read Galatians 3 and, and 1 in the Amplified Classic. It says you, uh, you senseless, foolish, and 
unreflecting Galatians. Oh boy, he just gives them all to us. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm missing two. You know, the, the new Amplified just says, you superficial Galatians. Uh, I miss the classic. They need to go back to the classic. You know, but he says, who bewitched you? That before your very eyes, Christ was, Christ was killed for you, openly portrayed, crucified. Mm. And now you think that because you, you started there, you can end it with yourself. It's never been by our might, nor by our power, nor, but always, always by the Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know? And we couldn't receive the Spirit until the blood washed us and the, the washing of the regeneration of the water of the Word hit our hearts. Mm-hmm. You know? And now we want to we finish what we started in faith. We want to finish with works of our own righteousness, which is but filthy rags before Him. Mm-hmm. That's why we can't discern. Because we forgot the dependency. We're, we're, we're codependent on our, um, the size of our ministry, the size of our paycheck, and our own abilities. But we forgot that, you know, it's, it's everything we do should be by faith. Yeah. That's so good. Because I think, and I think that we can so often get caught up in comparison game and, like you said, the size of our yeah and the size of our paychecks instead of really falling after the spirit and being obedient to what he has and trusting him to take care of our needs or getting us where we need to be or opening doors for us and that it all comes back down to a heart issue it, it really does and you know the we we said it in the first podcast you know we said guard your above all guard your heart because mm-hmm. out of it flows the issues of life yeah. And I think that's a good transition to go into meditation, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and so you asked me to share on meditate. So as a, as a Hebrew person, um, I like to read the old Testament sometimes in, in the original. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. And then I'm going to show you the, the one thing that's really cool. Uh, so Joshua chapter one, verse eight says, this book of the law shall not depart from out your mouth. Now, go and look at it in any translation. It says it should not depart Mm -hmm. from your mouth. So that means don't speak. Yeah. But yet we got name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, ministries, you know, all the, you know, oh, they can claim the promises of God. Oh, yeah, they are yes and amen. And they forget the next part in Christ Jesus. Mm. (laughs) It's yes and amen. Oh, I'm going to take that, Jesus. Mm, That car is for me. You know, mm -hmm. it's all mine. Hallelujah. (laughs) <laughs> What's it to you? <laughs> you know, but the, he says, but this, this law, and, and we can translate it, that word law for us in this past the cross, mm-hmm. you know, we can translate it. The word should not depart from your mouth mm. at all. But then there's a, there's a, there's a conjunction and the, the conjunction in Hebrew, it, it says better translation is until, mm. until thou ha- has meditated it day and night. And that's why I want to just stop there with that scripture. You can read the rest in your own time. It's good to read it all in context. Just go and get it. He says, this word must not depart from your mouth until you have meditated day and and now, now I'm going to take you to Psalms 1. You all should know it, mm-hmm. but in case we don't, you know, uh, it's good to read the word anyways, right? It is great to read the word. It, it is is, it is healing for the nations. Mm-hmm. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law or the word, which he, what? meditates day and night. Now listen, this is what happens when you meditate. Then when you've meditated it day and night and you've made it a part of who you are, it says, then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither. So if you don't want your stuff to die, you don't want your business to die, you don't want your ministry to die, you don't want to uh, die and dry up or dry up and die up. I don't know. You know, it says, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yes, the prosperity message. Yeah. Meditate the word. Make it a part of your very being. Then when whatever you, your hand goes forth to do will prosper. Yeah. 
because it's not you that lives, but Christ that lives. He was the word, the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst men. Now the word dwells in you. John 15, abide in me and I in you and my word in you. And whatsoever you ask of the Father, he'll what? He'll do it. Why? Because the word's in you. But we take the word, we read it, we read our little day plans, we read our day by day, and I've got no problems with those things. But when last have you taken the word and just sat and meditated day and night? Oh, but I'm not in full-time ministry. I can't do that. Um, I'm in full-time ministry, and I can't even do it. But I'm, you know, I take some time off in the year, and I, everyone gets annual leave. Yeah. I just use my annual leave different than them. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'd love to sit and just study the word day and day. And I'm a, I'm a Bible school dean and I don't even get that time to, right. <laughs> to do. When, when I'm in the word, it's to create curriculum, to create tests and then to explain it more than to, to, to read it, you know, but then there's this, this time where I just take off and COVID was great for me. You know, it was a blessing. I got time with my girls, yeah. you know, I, I got time to, meditate day and night and then i'll sit in the and people think you you have to sit and wear a prayer shawl or do something and sit like this and meditate no i just sit and i think and i i imagine the word working in my life i i sit and i you know uh daniel uh, and when i teach uh, the culture of visions and dreams uh, in my dream interpretation and vision interpretation i said i teach people to um to make a life of visions a natural thing because it's so easy. Daniel said, as I lay in my bed with the visions in my head, Mm -hmm. imagination gives you the power to enact the word of God. If you can envision it, God can do it for as a man thinketh, so is he. So visions are actually God's you taking the word, using your imagination, planning it out and then getting lost in the vision. Have you ever got lost in your imagination about what God could do? That's vision. (laughs) People are so they want to make it so super spiritual that they, they complicate it and they miss it. Yeah. That's so good. You know? That's so good. And I think, and I think part of our, and I, probably not in South Africa, but here in America, like when I was growing up, I was, I had a vivid imagination and people would say, Oh, stop, yeah. get your head out of the clouds, yes. put your feet back on the ground. And I think that we've done a disservice to us and our, everywhere in the world right because because we're telling them the reality is well actually the reality yeah. is the word of god the reality is yes. god Come is on, creative preach. god is imaginative he created our imagination and that yeah. we need to step into who he's created us to be and and that's the thing that people always you know the lord is going to give you the desires of your heart they stop there but it yeah. goes on beyond why they're going to give yeah. the desires out because you're going to be meditating on the Lord because you're seeking the Lord because you're seeking him with your whole heart. He's giving them to you. So those are the desires that he's put in us. It's in our selfish exactly. desires. Yeah. And I think that's so good because when you were talking about this meditating piece and meditating on it day and night and not letting it come out of your mouth, I think how quick people are to just like yep. this. Oh, they're believe- like they're like semi-automatic guns. They just yep. da, 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 da. exactly, and and I think that sometimes there's things that the Lord gives us as prophets. I think I think our job is to sit and wait and marinate and meditate yes. on what the Lord is saying, and not always throw something out there because I have to be relevant or I have to post something today because people won't follow me if I don't. And I think that that that's what this is really talking about, about meditating. I'm actually in the Old Testament right now in Deuteronomy and the Lord is, oh, I mean, he's got Moses telling the people, obey, 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 listen to these. Mm. Don't let this law depart from you. Do this, do this. If you do this, then these things are going to happen. And then when you started talking about this, when we were talking on the phone last week and you started talking about where the Lord has you just meditating on this, I, I began to think about, well, how would that look in my life? I mean, I'm loving COVID right now too, Darren. So yeah. um, because, because things have slowed down, I don't have to like meet with a bunch of people. Yeah. I'm not traveling. And so I'm getting more time with the Lord. And But that's not the norm for us, right? The norm for yeah, us is, yeah. you know, we're ministering of the gospel. So we're in the word so that the word can come out of us, but we're doing it so that we can impart it to others. In this season, I'm getting it in me and the Lord is giving me revelation, but I'm meditating on it. And when you said that last week, I thought, well, how does this, how would this look in our life? Like if I start traveling again, you know, tomorrow, what would it look like? I would totally miss my time with the Lord unhindered. Yeah. 
it would be like when we pray. It's an ongoing conversation with the Lord, right? Yeah, exactly. He gives us something, we ruminate over it, we think about it. It doesn't depart our mind. We meditate on it, we ask him questions. We journal about it. We talk to other people about it. We talk to God about it. And then we just kind of hold those things in our heart until it gives us the, the okay to release it. Well, let me share a story with you. When I started ministry, my mentor said to me, he said, Darren, if you want to be a minister, then um, if you just want to be a normal minister and not be effective, so then plan your sermons. Mm. He said, plan them. He said, but if you really want to minister from the heart of God, he said, study your word, but never plan a sermon. He said, know the word back and forth and let the Holy Spirit bring to your remembrance in that time. He said, so you be a student first of the word mm. and let the Spirit bring it back when you need it. He said, but never plan a sermon and visualize, meditate what you want to see happen in the sermon in the, the service. Mm -hmm. So when I started ministering at 15, I was lying in the tent one uh, afternoon. I just come off college because I went and done like the equivalent of a GED in our community college. And I was finished with classes and I was lying in the tent on the grass <laughs> and I was just holding my Bible, reading a little bit, meditating what I read. And all of a sudden I said, let me imagine and these were my words. Let me imagine what it would be like if this happened. So I imagine, and in my imagination, all of a sudden I see this, and I'm imagining, I see this lady with a red fedora hat with a doily thing on and a red sweater. It's, it's winter. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and she's sitting there and I walk up to her and I said, ma'am, uh, the doctors just told you, you have cancer in, in your liver and, and they and it's spreading throughout and there's no hope. Don't even worry about chemo. You can't afford it. You know, and then I see a guy, at the back of the tent, leaning against the pole, he's drunk, but he, he's he's drunk because his son was just killed in a minibus accident, and he's just lost all hope, and his his life has been marred with the death of family members. And I see, and I'm like, "Ooh, this is dark," but it's you know, but wow, look at the power of God hitting them. She got healed, he got restored, he's sober, and I'm like, "Wow, I've got like you say that people will tell us, oh, you got a wild imagination, right?" And I didn't think anything more. I'm like, man. If I, if I told my mom what I just imagined now, she would be mad at me. Yeah. She said, you should be spending time in the Word. You should do it man's way, you know? Stop daydreaming. You're, you're so heavenly minded, you know earthly good, we get told, you know, in the charismatic circle. Yes, we do get told that. So that night, I, I get out and I start, the worship is done and I, I come from the front stair and I get up to the pulpit and lo and behold, who is there? the lady in the red fedora. Now, if this stretches, you you know, turn me off. I don't, you know, but there That's she was. So good. This is so Just good. like I saw her, you this know. How that works. <laughs> and, and just like I saw her, and I'm like, <gasps> I'm 15 years old. I don't know how this stuff works. But all I know is uh, unhindered, and my theology has never determined who God was. Mm -hmm. e even in my studies and going, it's never determined my opinion of God. My relationship has always determined that. But I found the word to prove my opinion of him wow. through my studies That's good. to be right. So my relationship with him, because it started with relationship and it's going to end with relationship, not the, the opinion I formed from him from my advanced hermeneutics class. No, it's, I know he's good because he showed himself good. Yeah. So there's the lady in the red hat with the red sweater. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, no, I'm not bold enough yet to say you have cancer in your liver. I'm like, did, did you just get diagnosed with cancer in your liver and it's spreading everywhere? She just starts bawling, mm. you know. And she's like, last week, yes. And then she tells me everything that I told her in the vision. So it didn't play out exactly because I didn't have the confidence yet. Yeah. But I had the confidence to tell her she's healed when everything confirmed itself. Yeah. You know, and it just proves that the mouth of two can confirm it. I don't need to be impressive with my word of knowledge. She can confirm everything I heard. Mm -hmm. But the, the sign of God being there is that she's going out healed. Yeah. And she's still healed today and still serving as um, the, the, the mother, uh, the head mother of the, the orphanage. I love that. 
you know, God changed her life radically. She got healed. And then, okay, then I looked at the back pole for the second guy that I saw. He wasn't there. I'm like, oh, okay. And I missed it. So I just carried on with my old, the rugged cross message. And Jesus loves you so much. I didn't have fancy words. Or I didn't know what theosis was or kinesis. I had, I didn't even have Greek words. You know, I knew Hebrew, but that's no good because no one's going to understand it anyway. It's Africa. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. they, they barely understand English. <laughs> and... and and then I'm getting ready to the altar call and they stuck us in a guy leans against the pole. I'm like, huh, you, your son died and this, this, and this, and God loves you. And he's going to do something great. He stands up all of a sudden he's sober and he's still working in ministry. He's one of our campus pastors. Yes, Lord. But, but it didn't, you know, and we want to understand signs and that, but why don't we just understand the sign that the word is given? Yeah. You know, we've got the word. Uh, Paul says, uh, in the storm, a rocklodon, uh, and he's, you know, they, they shipwrecked. But before they get shipwrecked, he says, men, be of good courage. For tonight, the angel of the Lord has stood by me. He says, and I believe that it shall be as it was told me. Mm-hmm. When last did we say, I believe, mm. as it was told me by uh-huh. the living word? Yeah. That is so good. That is so good. Um, as I've, you know, been reading in the Old Testament, one of the things that I came, because I'm so glad you talked about the name it and claim it and grab it and blab it, because that is so yeah. not mm, what, the, what this is about, um, is, but when we take the word and we speak it and we believe it, we receive the power that's in it. Yeah. And the Lord, um, the, in fact, I have a t-shirt that I created, which was speak it, believe it, receive it. And somebody said, is that the name it and claim it? No, it's not. It's about the word of God. It's when you um, get it and you begin to speak the word of God and you receive the truth that's in it and you believe it, you're going to receive the stuff that God has. And I I mean, that was like what Moses was telling the children of Israel, right? Listen, take what God is saying at his word. I know what you're seeing in the natural, but that's not God's plan for you. And I love that at 15, that you didn't know how it worked, but you knew what your relationship was with God. He's yeah. showing you on your imagination. You don't even know. You're just like, you're seeing it, you're imagining it, but it actually, the Lord was preparing you for what yeah. was going to happen. And I love how real you are too, Darren, because I mean, we've all been there. I wasn't brave enough. I wasn't bold enough. I wasn't courageous enough, but yet you let it be confirmed and that built your faith and you still did what you needed to do. And she was healed and she's still serving. I mean, the power of what God allowed to happen there, she's still working in ministry because she received an experiential experience, knowledge, power of God firsthand. Yeah. And and, you know, if we could step up, as believers and really believe, then the signs of the times, because before the times is the signs. Mm -hmm. So the the time is the kingdom of God. The set time to favor Zion is when? Now. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what scripture says. The set time to favor Zion is now. But before the favor comes, the signs must come. These signs must follow them that believe. The Holy Spirit was poured out 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And he's showing signs and wonders in the heaven. What are the wonders? The, the, the shadows of the apostles healed the sick. The, the handkerchiefs, the aprons, the piece of cloth that was on Paul's body was sent and it healed the sick. Mm. Man, we can't even pray a headache away anymore. Yeah. You know? and, and then you pray for someone and the, the, you say, uh, do you feel any better? Uh, no, I don't, but, but it will happen in God's time. Well, God's time was 2000 years ago when he crucified his son. You have to receive your healing. And, and sometimes I get so mad with, because it says the, 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 the traditions of men have made the word of God of no effect. God determined your healing 2000 years ago when he crucified his son, Mm. he gave his son, you know, but our religion is that if God be willing, if he wasn't willing, then why did he send his son? Right. You know, and, and uh, you, you see the religion, how it's corrupted and poisoned our minds. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, you know, if, if it doesn't happen, it's okay. I've got Advil. 
Oh, well, you know, I, I'm actually getting paid because I'm I'm uh, injured right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's okay. I don't need a healing because my injury. I, I've seen this. I've seen this since no, being I've, here. I've seen it too. Yeah, and and yes, the precious blood and the stripes that Jesus healed, and we'll rather exchange our health for a disability check. Mm -hmm. That the mind, the, the the Bible says, in the last day, men will be given over to a depraved mind. Mm. We're, we, the the mind, the depravity of our minds, and we we there's very few people that say they serve God, serve God. They serve mammon. Mm. You know, I, people who know me as I turn preacher never let me take up the offering because I, I don't I don't think a Christian should give a tithe. I think they should give it all like the early church did. I said, the tithe is a nice suggestion, but in, in the New Testament, the, the early church gave it all. Mm. So, you know, for the, anyone who wants to invite me to their church, just be warned. <laughs> uh, don't, don't let me take the offering. You know. Well, just let me do the message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me do the message. You know, the tithe is a suggestion, man. You need, you, your offering should make your tithe look like it, it's mm. an orphan. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and I've got scriptural background for it, but the, the, the thing is, it just shows where our hearts are. Uh, and just coming back to the heart, you know, my wife, you can ask her, she, I will not buy something for myself. She's like, okay, uh, love, this is what I want to get with the tax money. What do you want? I said, well, the ministry needs this, this, and this. Get me that. She's <laughs> like, no, I said for you, not the church. I said, well, I am the church. So yeah. let's get you know, and she said, no, but love, you need to get something for yourself. Well, now let's get something for the church. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's not boasting, right? It's just, you know, if, if anything, I don't glory in myself. I glory in that God has really grabbed my heart and that I've fallen so in love with this Jesus. And I just want to share my love yeah. for him. I, I think the, the, the thing that we've lost as, an, as a nation, uh, and nations of the world is that we've lost our first love. Yeah. You know, we can't discern the times because we're so busy trying to discern our bank balances and our ministry charts and our, our clicks per view. And, you know, how many likes I got on my social media and am I relevant? It doesn't yeah. matter if you're relevant. Jesus wasn't even relevant when he came to his own. Yeah, that's so true. The only one I want to be known by is Jesus. I want, when, yeah. when it comes, I want him to say, I knew you. Yeah. I knew you. <laughs> and the demons. I want them to know me too. Yep. So I want them to know all me. I know, Jesus, I know. <laughs> you? Because <Yep. laughs> they better know me too. <laughs> I don't want to be a son of Skiba. Yes, no, none, none of that. No, I think, I think it, it's really important to, like when you were talking about, you know, your wife saying you have to get something for yourself. I think about as a parent um, and as a mom of kids, right? Um, yeah. That I would buy for them before I would buy for myself. And sure, that's, sure. that's kind of what you're talking about, you know, putting it in perspective of really that today, especially in America, money is yeah. really, we can determine where our heart really is based on where our money is and where so it goes. True. And, you know, that's why we, my husband and I have talked about, you know, well, revival, people want revival. And he said, in America, revival is never going to come until something happens to take away their money and their security, because that's, on, what they, that's what they put their security in. It's not their trust and faith in God. It's in what their bank account balance and what they can do, because we can go buy medicine, we can go see the doctors. But when you, when I travel outside of the country, like, the miracles happen more because that's yeah. all they have. It's dependent upon God and God alone because they have no money to go to the doctors or to do the other things. So if God doesn't touch them, then they have no hope. And yeah, God yeah. is always good. God shows up. He touches them. They get healed. They get saved. They get healed and delivered. And they're, you know, now in the kingdom. And that's what it's about. So true. You know, and, and I, I think... You know, we we actually, uh, and I'm going to say something, and it might it might shock you, but the fact that we live in times and seasons shows that the kingdom of God has not come to us, mm. because the Bible actually says we can redeem the time. Mm. You know, 
So I, I told a message on this and I said, time is a construct made for the natural world. But the moment you can buy back a season or a moment, mm -hmm. now look at this, when, when they needed the sun to stand still, mm -hmm. it stood still. It did. Time is a construct given to the natural man. Mm -hmm. But to the new man, he operates outside of time where the father operates. That's why when Ephesians um, mm. says... I have something the, new to meditate on, Darren. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let me pull up that scripture real quick. Uh, so give me a second real quick. So it, it's in Ephesians 5 and 16. And it says, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Now, I want you to go and look up all those of you who have got some good e-sword or it means to buy back, to purchase back. You know, there's no way you can look at it. So how do you purchase back time? So, you know, we, so Ephesians, uh, what did I say? Ephesians 5, 16? 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, of course, that's why I'm not in the right place because I'm in redeeming. Ephesians 5.16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So are we in evil days? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what do we do? Redeem the time. Buy back the time. Redeem it. And people say, oh, oh, but it's the time lost. You know, he'll restore to you that that the canker worm, the palmer worm is eaten. Okay, but how does he do it? You know? Oh, you yeah. No, well, Abraham was old and passed, Sarah was old past, but he made their bodies young. They operated in their youth uh, when they were old. Uh -huh. She had strength in her womb to conceive and carry seed. Wow. So why would a natural man want to live in, why would a spiritual, a son of God, want to live in the constructs of time that were given to a natural man. Mm. Hmm. So, you know, I, I love, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm just trying to store, no, you, uh, stir I, thoughts. But it, you, and that's exactly why I like talking with you so much because one, you're a student of the word and two, a Hebrew scholar and, and you have a doctorate in these things and you get me thinking outside of the norms. Well, I, all the other doctors think um, like that's where the term mystic comes from. No, you too mystical. You, you should use um, homiletics. I said, well, you know, the, the scribes and the Pharisees were the masters of Israel and they didn't even see the Messiah when he came. So, yeah, you, you know, they didn't discern every, the very well. No, they didn't, you know, and, and yes, yes, the one who comes outside of time, who spoke out of the darkness, mm -hmm. you know, but yet it says the Bible says, and God surround himself in darkness. Well, that word darkness is mis mystery. Yeah. And he spoke out of the darkness, sent the word as a light. Then our eyes were enlightened that we might see. And the darkness that enshrouded God, the mystery. And I love to, the mysteries and secret is one of my favorite things to preach. Because mm. I, you know, it says, um, this mystery that was hidden from all ages. Your eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. And everyone stops there. But the next verse says, but now is revealed. Everyone stops. Oh, I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. You, you just, yeah. see, there's my rabbi mind wants to come and say, you sugar, you're crazy. <laughs> Read the next word. But now is made open. It's revealed. It's shown. Yeah. You, we can see all the mysteries that surround God. The darkness that he enclosed himself with that mystery has been split like a veil, which is to say his flesh, and been poured open, and now we can behold him. No man has seen the Father except the Son. Mm. But Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yep. So look through me to see him. But we've come to God who lives in unapproachable light. Well, aren't you called the sons of light? So go and become one with the light, then you can behold him as a man who speaks to his friend face to face. So good. You have to become light to see the light. To see the light. You have to be one. Father, John 15, John 17. Father, John 17 says, 
But Jesus prays, Father, let them be one, even as you and I are one. How do we become one? And uh, last night in my class, I was talking about the intimacy of being at his feet. You know, and it, it was just like, how do we become intimate? Because the intimacy with Christ, mm. the intimacy with the Holy Spirit makes us one, and they should become one flesh. We speak not of the mystery of the husband and the wife, but of what Christ and his church. Yep. So once we become intimate and one with him, then we are one with the Father. From the Son proceeds from the Father. Mm. No one comes to the Father except through the what, Son. So we have free, bold access to the place called there, there where the mercy seat is, there where the God of unapproachable light is. We come through the light of the world that we can come to approachable light because now we can boldly come because what Paul says, we are as he is. We are seated in heavenly places. What? We must just elevate by our intimacy and draw near. Yeah. So good. So good. I think you just gave us like, I don't know, a year's worth of things to meditate on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. So, okay, everybody that's listening or watching, um, you're going to have to like hit pause, rewind and play again. because And just go Google the scriptures that I'm just quoting off offhand, you know, go find them, read them, meditate them. You know, uh, Malcolm Smith wrote a book, How I Learned to Meditate many, many years ago. And this guy had a phenomenal photo. If I'm, if I'm retelling the story incorrectly, someone help me out. But how I remember it was told to me is he was amazing. He had this photographic memory and he remembered the Bible in all different types of translations. Versions. He knew the Greek, the Hebrew. He could even remember all the strong concordance numbers. And uh, all of a sudden, one day he's sitting there and he's impressing people. He's like, pick a scripture, I'll quote it. Pick a scripture, I'll quote it. And everyone was amazed. And he sits at this bench all chuffed and pleased with himself. And, and an old man comes and sits next to, the bar, to him on the bench. And he says, you know, young man, that was really good. He says, it's just a pity you don't know the word. Mm. And he looked at him and he's like, excuse me, I know the word. I just proved it. He says, you know it here, but you don't know it here. Mm. And Malcolm said to him, you don't know what you're talking about, old timer. You can't do what I can do. And the old man said, just think about it. And he got up and Malcolm was like getting ready to say something, getting his Bible out of his bag and said, pick a scripture. And the man was gone. And he was on a campus where it was flat, no trees, they couldn't hide. And he realized, oh, I could have just been in the presence of an angel. So mm -hmm. now he's perturbed and he's walking home. And, um, uh, as he's walking on the road, he's looking down, oh, just so perturbed at what this man said. Could it be an angel? Couldn't it be? What's going on? And bam, he walks into a cow. <laughs> I, I mean, this, and he's looking at the cow from, because, I mean, he walked into it. So obviously the cow didn't move, but he moved and he moved. he's on his butt. And he, he looks at the cow and the cow looks at him and the cow goes down and picks up a piece of grass and chews it and chews it and chews it. And then he sees the cow swallow it. And then he's sitting there. All of a sudden, he can't move. And God says to him audibly, he says, don't move. Watch the cow. And all of a sudden, the cow does this thing, and it regurgitates it, and it chews it again. We know that's called chewing the cud. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you truly want, God said to him, if you truly want to know the word mm -hmm. in your heart, then the word must be like that cow chewing the cud. You need to chew it and ingest it. And then bring it up again to recall it to your memory, not for the sake of memorizing it, but for the sake of chewing on it again until it becomes a part of you. And then swallow it again. And your whole life, every scripture, everything that you've committed to memory or, or just read, chew it ingest it make it a part of you and then bring it up again and chew it again every time you need the word and that's it goes back to what jesus said you know he says don't worry about what you're going to say or think because the spirit will bring to your remembrance everything i've taught you mm, that's good see the spirit brings it up from the the inner because out of your belly comes a river of living water yeah but you first got to get that living water in you and it's got to be you know 
processing and cleaning your mind and making it pure and then the water will come out and then i've got a i've got a theory on how this works the river that's in me it says out of the throne and out of the lamb comes a river of living water and out of my belly comes so th there's a new umbilical cord called the river and it comes from my belly and connects to the lamb and that's why i can be where he is because i'm connected by this river of living water mm. And that's why I can be in heavenly places. And yeah, I can do what Jesus done. I can, I, I do everything I see the father do. Why? Because I'm connected with this river. That's good. That is so good. Oh, and, and that's just a theory. <laughs> I know, but it's something for us to meditate on. It's something for us to ask God questions about, right? He loves that. Yeah. And, and I don't know, does he do this with you? I ask him a question and he responds with a question. Well, it's because he's Jewish. Yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> you know, Jesus was a Jew. You know, you ask a Jew, "How are you doing? Why are you my doctor that you need to know?" Huh? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> then later, yeah. Why you ask how am I doing? What's it to you? <laughs> you know, I love I love calling up my Jewish friends and my family that are, are still you know very acidic. I'm like, hey, Manuel, how are you doing? He's like. You're my doctor that you need to know how I'm doing. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and here in America, it's like, good, good. We're, and then we end the conversation, right? Um, unless you're uh, really um, filled with the spirit of uh, charismaticism. I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed, but inside <laughs> they're breaking and dying. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Yes, that is so good. Oh, Darren, this was so good today. Thank you for coming back on the podcast and sharing and um, awesome. really talking about not just discerning the times, but how we actually go about meditating on the word and not allowing it to, to leave us, but also then giving us something to really process and meditate on with the Lord to really think outside of our normal spiritual boxes where we can go to the Lord and say, let's talk to us about the times and the seasons yeah. and talk to us about these things. And so thank you for that. And that's the thing I love about you is that every time I listen to you speak or you teach that you're always giving me a challenge to then go to the word, to find it in the word, and then to go deeper with the Lord. So I appreciate that about you. So thank I'm you. I'm going to leave you guys with one, one last thought. Okay. If times and seasons are so important, then why did God command these people or his servant to sow in a time of drought? Oh. Oh. Hmm. Just because it's the season of the world doesn't mean it's a season of the church. That's good. Because we operate in heaven's season. Yes, we do. In the season of the cross. That is so good, Darren. So my philosophical rabbinical side has now <laughs> left you with a question as a good Jew would do. <laughs> He's leaving us with a good question, people. So um, I want you to pray for us. But before you do, okay. um, I know that there's some new things on the horizon for you. You guys are starting a yeah. church. You have a new app. So um, I know that my listeners have already been intrigued by you when I had you on before and they were asking for you to come back. So how can they connect with you? How can they find you? How can they get this app, all that stuff? Great. So we've got a, a new website. It's, it's on. It's barely finished, but it's on. Um, it's Words of Life min.com on there they can get our app there's a button to click it's for android or apple you know whatever floats your boat uh, you know the god's people use apple i'm just saying <laughs> i was just gonna say that but you know <laughs> <laughs> there you go um but no there it's there for them um it's got all our podcasts on there and links to find our podcast on apple or android mm -hmm. um everything really can be found from that website um words of life m i n short for ministry.com mm -hmm. and uh, the app is on there all all our announcements will be on there um and from there we'll actually be doing dream schools and webinars um in the near future so just keep visiting back there and we'll give you guys uh, as things unravel the church we not this sunday but the next we'll be starting a church where really excited about that it's the first time in seven years i'll be stepping into the role of a pastor mm -hmm. for years i think 10 plus years i've been itinerant in the prophetic and now um the, i don't want to call it a church because it's not really a church it's a it's a training center for the sons of yeah. god 
because I, the goal is not to have people there forever. I want to get them in, train them up and kick them out. Right. You know, so Go do the work of the kingdom. Yeah, exactly. Because the fivefold perfects them for the working of the, the ministry, not us. So why must I work the ministry when I can train you to do? It? Exactly. <laughs> and that's the way so, it's supposed to be. That's the way it's yes. supposed to be. So I think if anything, we'll call it a revival center or a kingdom center. We just want to get you in, get you trained out. And we, we're doing a Bible school for exactly that purpose to teach sound good doctrine you know no flaky stuff jesus is not coming back in a ufo you know <laughs> um all, all that kind of stuff we just you know as the word says it's season, so i've heard some of those things so <laughs> well i've heard that there's a, a new religion called the uh, the religion of the flying spaghetti monster so oh boy we're, we're in some crazy times. It is some crazy times. People, we have to learn to discern the times and the seasons and the signs that are going on in the natural. Yeah. And then we have to go to the word of God and we need to see what he is saying to us. And Darren, thank you for that. So awesome. is there, can you pray? Is there something yes. on your heart to uh, release over um, our viewers and listeners as we end this episode? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, as I'm as I'm praying, I'll wait for to see if God uh, releases anything. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for Debbie being an open vessel. Just to, Father, I thank you for this friendship. I thank you for the sister in Christ who we count dear. I thank you for every person in her ministry and, and all those that you know. Um, learn and glean and, and are trained under her father i thank you that they will go on to the work of the ministry and father right now as i um as i'm sitting here father i just ask that healing go forth mm. father i thank you that i just sense that somebody that's going to listen that you just struggle so much to keep your um sugar in control your diabetes father i thank you that healing is just hitting that body right now they'll be diabetic free uh, father i just thank you um lord there's a husband and wife really going through a, a tremendous time um they're trying to work it out but the more they try the more it fails father thank you that in, in you in you they won't strive in their own strength but they'll they'll do it through the spirit father i thank you that divine inspiration just hits their hearts and they'll know how to proceed and how to rekindle and how to reconnect to one another father i thank you uh, lord i also just I, I thank you that as we go forth and as everyone listens to this message father i ask touch every heart renew rekindle and reignite their mm -hmm. passion for the word their passion to meditate father open ways ancient doorways that the the old mystics had where it became a dirty word in today's time to be a mystic to ex to want to ex explore the mysteries and the deepness of god it's just it's another term to explore Explore the depths of your love. The no height, no depth, no angel, no principality, no things present, no things to come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. They can explore the heights and find that. They can explore the depths and find that. They can explore the spirit and find that nothing can separate them from your love. So, Father, I thank you for a, a new season. There's a person watching, a lady. Um, uh, you're listening, watching. Uh, I, I feel like you're going to watch this. Uh, you're you're so hungry. Liz, you're so hungry for God and you're so hungry to have an encounter. As you begin to meditate, mm. God is going to open up heavenly visions and encounters for you. Yeah. As you meditate, as you call upon his name, as you seek him out every desire that you've had, and you've been in this for a good long while 20 years of just really uh, i hear the word 20 years you've been searching for an encounter and god is faithful to give you he is faithful to those who diligently he rewards them that diligently seek him your time is now mm. to experience him so father i thank you and i believe her name is liz father thank you for her encounter mm -hmm. and father for everyone listening may they 
May they share in that. May they share in that. May they may this be a seasons of dreams, visions, and heavenly encounters. And they will call the name of that place Bethel. Yeah. They will commemorate that moment, that time. 2020 will not be known as a year of, of agony, but it will be known as a year of encounter for everyone listening in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Whew, that was good. All right. Liz, let us know when you listen and watch this, what God did for awesome. you, because we're believing for the miraculous to happen. And for those of you that receive that word of knowledge for your healing, let us know. We want to partner with you. We want to celebrate with you. And we want to believe yes. for mm-hmm. more of the kingdom of God to come upon you. And then go and do likewise. As you've received yours, go and lay your hands on other people and do that because what God has done for you, he will do for other people. So Darren, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. Thank you for listening today. I'm Debbie Kitterman. If you were encouraged in any way, we'd be honored if you would subscribe to our podcast or YouTube channel. And we'd also ask you to leave a review and share today's episode so we can get the message out there about Darren and all that he had to share with us. Thank you again. Until next week. Bye. I'm not in the thunder. I'm not in the rain. I'm not in the wind of the hurricane. Look to me. I'm drawing you near. I have called you. Get it here. Cause there's peace in my presence. Do not fear. I'm not in the shaking that shatters a rock. I'm not in the fall of the mountaintops. I'm not in the fire and consume and flame. I'm in the whisper that calls a name. Cause there's peace in my presence. Do not fear. Do not fear. I have called you. He has called you He has called you He has called you